It is so good to see you this morning. I wish all of y'all could stand where I am this morning and see how beautiful you are, dressed in red and green and white. You are absolutely gorgeous in the Lord, and I'm so thankful that uh, it is close to Christmas. Amen? Amen? Amen. And it is my prayer and my desire, and I believe it's God's desire too, that during this Christmas season, that sometime on the Christmas day, that we will take opportunity to, as a family, read the Christmas story. Because it is his birthday. It is the one in whom we celebrate as we think about Christmas. It is his birthday. Just think what it would be like if it was your birthday and everybody celebrated everybody else instead of you. That would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? So I hope that uh, Christmas morning that you will take time with your family to open up the Word of God and to read the Christmas story that is, that is a wonderful story for us. Well, take your Bible this morning and turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 2. We are thankful for the writing of this Dr. Luke and uh, how he wanted to leave a message and how that he wanted it to be true and honest and that the uh, examples of Jesus and the activities of Jesus could be explained and shared so that everyone would have an opportunity to read this glorious gospel that we've been given by Jesus. Luke chapter 2. Let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Father, thank you so much for your glorious blessings that you give to us. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you that it is the word of God that has been made flesh among us. We've been able to behold the glory of God through Jesus. And we've not only seen it through the word, but Lord, we've experienced it in our heart. For many of us have accepted you as our Lord and Savior. And we've been forgiven of our sin. We've been made new. We've been born again. Our names have been written down in the Lamb's book of life and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. So Lord, as we as baptized believers have come together this morning, I pray that you would speak through me, your servant, uh, the word of God, so that it might minister to your church and their need today. We ask this prayer in the powerful name of Jesus, believing that you have heard our prayer. Amen and amen. In chapter 2 of the book of Luke, we find the wonderful Christmas story the story of Jesus' birth. So if you would, would you stand with me as we read this wonderful story of Jesus? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swathing clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass the angels were gone away from them in heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came and made haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. You may be seated. As we have seen over the last few weeks, Christmas is a miraculous time of year. It is a time when, as we've celebrated, that miracles have happened. 
We started with the book of Malachi, and we noticed that even in the book of Malachi, there was a, there was a prophecy that said there was going to be a forerunner of Jesus to come, and he was going to pave the way for the Messiah. And certainly we find that in John the Baptist. We find that uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth were well beyond childbearing years, and there was a miracle of God that uh, caused Elizabeth to be birth to birth a son whose name was John. We find that it was a miracle when Zechariah went into the temple uh, to offer the evening sacrifice, offer the evening incense upon the golden altar of incense. For there were thousands of priests in his order, and it just so happened, amen, it just so happened that the lot fell on him that he would be entering into the to the temple and offering that incense. And while he was there, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and told him exactly what was going to take place that his wife was going to have a son. And because of his unbelief, the Bible says he wasn't able to speak again. He was struck dumb and he could not speak. And when he came out to address all the people, they had known that something had gone on in the temple that was supernatural. Well, what is a miracle? It is the supernatural power of God working in life. It is when a miracle is when God supersedes the natural to bring the supernatural into being. And that's exactly what he's done at, for the Christmas story. And then we find the miraculous uh, story of God uh, presenting himself through the angel Gabriel to Mary and her getting the news that, isn't it kind of amazing that on one side God takes the oldest woman beyond childbearing years and he causes her to have a child. Isn't it something else that God takes the youngest woman who is a virgin and he allows her to become pregnant by the Holy Spirit and she will have a child. Isn't God awesome? I mean, from one spectrum to the other, is anything too hard for God? So let me ask you a question this morning. As you've come to the house of God, in your life and the things that are going on in your life, is there anything too hard for God? There's not a thing too hard for God. If you've got marital problems, it's not a hard thing for God. If you've got a physical problem, it's not a hard thing for God. If you've got monetary problems, it's not a hard thing for God. When we search for God in the word of his testimony, then God gives us the word that we need, whether that word comes from the power of the Holy Spirit or whether that comes from other people or whether that comes from the Bible or whether that comes through circumstances. God speaks to us in a way that we can understand what he says to us. Amen? God, nothing is too hard for God. So I want to tell you, you know, government kind of gets in a mess sometimes, don't it? Sometimes government gets in a real mess. Amen? And I trust that God is going to help us as we labor with government and politics to get right. Amen? Amen? Well, I want to tell you, God even works in government. <laughs> Did you know that? Mary and Joseph had to get to Bethlehem. Now, how could God get them to Bethlehem? Would you hear me? Nazareth in the Holy Land is here. Bethlehem is down here. It's about as far from uh, Nazareth to Bethlehem as it is from here to Clinton, Mississippi. Now then, it's nothing. Vaughn and I have gone to Jackson and back before. No big deal, right? But if you have a pregnant wife and you have a donkey and that's your transportation, that's your mode, how long is it going to take you to get over those rugged rocks and that rugged terrain and that hot terrain to get, from, to get over 90 miles to where? And what would it take to motivate you to take a pregnant wife from her home all the way 90 miles away on a donkey 
to pay your taxes. Well, God knew what it would take, amen? And so he caused the government to arrive at a tax that was had to be done. God can work anywhere he chooses to do so, amen? And it is even government from time to time. So God is working through the government, Augustus, Caesar Augustus, and he presents a tax, and therefore Mary and Joseph have to go to their hometown, the home of their descendants, to pay their, to register and to pay their taxes. So here we are. God produces another miracle of Christmas. Amen? He leave, they leave Nazareth and they're on their way to Bethlehem. And it's not until she gets there, till they get there, and we know the story, there's no room in the inn. So where do they go? They go to the stable. And there they are going to spend the night in that stable. And while they're there, the Bible says that she delivers a child. And as she delivers this child, the Bible says she wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Now what I understand about swaddling clothes, they are just actually strips of cloth that they believe that if they wrapped the baby tight enough that everything would be okay with the baby, they would feel secure, and they would be quiet. Hello? So here is Jesus. He is born. She wraps him in swaddling clothes, and then she lays him in a feeding trough a feeding trough. Have you ever seen a feeding trough? Hello? You know, we have these little things that have, kind of like in a V shape. That's not a feeding trough. Cow can't get their tongue down in there. <laughs> so it's a flat thing with sides on it. And so here we are. They take baby Jesus and they lay him in the feeding trough. Now look, here's King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he is going to be, he is all powerful. There's nothing too hard for him. And he's born in a stable and they put him in a feeding, they lay him in a feeding trough. And while this is happening, another supernatural miracle takes place. Wonder why God wanted them to go to Bethlehem? Wonder why God wanted them to go to Bethlehem? Because in Micah chapter 5, in verse 2, there is a prophecy that says that out of the little city of Bethlehem there is going to come a leader. And of his kingdom it will be from everlasting to everlasting. And so it's very important that Jesus is born in Bethlehem to fulfill the prophecies that God had already made about the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the Lord of all, to be born in Bethlehem. So here we are. There in Bethlehem. Now why would it be that God would want Jesus to be born in Bethlehem? Well, on the hills of, Beth on the hills of Bethlehem, this is great fertile land and the best grass that is grown in all of Israel is grown in Bethlehem now then Bethlehem is just a hop skip and a big jump from Jerusalem and so the priest these were the, the lambs that were raised on the hills of Bethlehem these were the Passover lambs. How important were they? They were very important because when the Passover came, these Passover lambs that were raised here in Bethlehem were taken to Jerusalem by the priest. Matter of fact, they went in, the priest went in procession singing some of the Psalms 118, Psalms 118 to 1, uh, 114 to 118. And they would be singing these Psalms and they would be marching to Jerusalem. Well, guess what happened at the same time that these priests were bringing these Passover lambs into Jerusalem? Guess what was happening? Jesus the Christ was marching into Jerusalem with his great triumphal entry there into Jerusalem as those lambs. And as the, as the priests were crying out saying, honor and blessing and glory unto the lambs, the crowd was saying of Jesus, honor and blessing and glory. So those lambs that were being brought into Jerusalem to be slain. Now, in the day of Jesus, there were only about 250,000 of those lambs brought into the temple. Hello? 
250 lambs because we know that about 2.5 million people and there was about 10 lambs per person so that's 250,000 lambs that were brought into Jerusalem and they sacrificed as a Passover lambs for all of the families. Amen? So what I'm telling you here today is it was important that Jesus was born in Bethlehem to fulfill not only the prophecy of Scripture, but that it could be symbolic of the fact that Jesus is the Passover lamb that the Jews had celebrated for thousands of years. And so Jesus is the Passover lamb that is coming to take all the sin of the world. And so while there, while Jesus is laid in that, in that trough, out on the hills of Bethlehem, where the Passover lambs are being raised, there is an angel. And the angel appears to the glory of God to these shepherds. And they, she brings them good, the shepherd, the, the, the angel brings them good news of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of Bethlehem. I want to tell you here, nothing was left to chance. Nothing was left to happenstance. God had it planned out from the very beginning of how this was going to work out. And he knew that someday that Jesus, in the fullness of time, Jesus, the Messiah, was going to be born in Bethlehem. And so as these shepherds are there and they're seeing these angels and they're scared to death, nobody's ever seen an angel, as far as I can tell from Scripture, that wasn't scared to death because of the supernatural structure of the angel and the brilliance and the glory of God shining out in these angels so they were scared to death and so then when the angels gave angel gave their gave his gave its message and then the shepherds said one to another let us go and see this thing that is taking place in where Bethlehem so they head out to Bethlehem now on a, a scale of one to ten where shepherds rank in hierarchy of social strata where do you think they rank near the bottom but God takes near the bottom and he brings them to the stable where Jesus the Messiah the son of God the king of kings the lord of lords is birthed, has been birthed. Now, why do you suppose God chooses the shepherds? Why do you suppose, why didn't he bring kings? Well, he will later. But why didn't he bring great folks to be a part of that celebration? Because Jesus was going to be the shepherd. Do you hear me? When David was uh, David the son of Jesse. He was the younger son. And all the other boys were busy doing their stuff, and David was out tending the sheep. The Bible tells us that David killed the lion, the tiger, and the bear, oh my. <laughs> Hello? That was kind of a joke. <laughs> the lion and the bear that, that David killed while he was taking care of the sheep because the sheep were his responsibility. And he would give his life for the sheep. So then we find that David, as he learned responsibility and the closeness with God, he was a good shepherd of the sheep. And then he became the shepherd of Israel. Amen? So here we find that the shepherds come to see Jesus. And the Bible tells us that Jesus himself said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd cares for the sheep. Not only does he care for the sheep, but he gives his life for the sheep. And Jesus, even back there at his birth, it was being seen that Jesus was going to go to the cross and he was going to die as a shepherd of Israel, shepherd of all men, so that he could bring salvation to all mankind if they would just believe. Somebody say amen. So here we have the shepherd these shepherds have come and they've come to give their allegiance and their honor to this baby that is born in Bethlehem where all the Passover lambs were raised. Is God good? God is 
good. And I love what the angels said as they sung. Well, they didn't sing, but as they, verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Why has Jesus come? Why has Jesus come? Can I tell you that there was a little 10-year-old boy and he was scared. You know why he was scared? Because I heard a lot of sermons on hell. And it scared me to death to, to know that there was an eternal hell and that I had never been saved and I had never trusted in Jesus and I knew that if I were to die, you know where I'd go? To hell. Because God has prepared that place for the devil and unbelievers. There are some folks that think they're going to have a party when they get to hell, but I want to tell you, the Bible tells us that's not so. That's not the case. That the real knowledge of heaven is that it's where the worm dieth not and the fire is never, ever quenched. And I didn't want to go to hell. I didn't want to go to hell because I wanted to be in heaven with Jesus. And I knew that the way to heaven was not through my own intellect, was not what I could do as far as works were concerned, but the only way that I could get to heaven was believe in Jesus and surrender my life to him. So let me ask you something. Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you surrendered your life to him? And the re one of the things that happened in my life when I gave my life to Jesus, I didn't have to worry about hell anymore. God took that turmoil, and in the place of that turmoil, he gave me peace. It was like turning the light switch on in my life. Uh, he, he turned the light off the darkness, and he turned the light on with peace. And when we surrender ourselves and our situations and our struggles and our trials and our circumstances to God, then God works in our life to bring peace in us because we know His good is going to come. Amen? Amen. For the Scripture says in Philippians, it says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God shall garrison your heart about. What does that mean? That when I surrender my anxiety, when I surrender that thing that causes me anxiety to God and I trust in Him to do whatever needs to be done, then God will give me perfect peace in Him. How many has ever had the perfect peace of God? Let me see your hand. It's wonderful to know the peace of God when you've struggled with something, struggled with a circumstance, and the peace of God that the, the angels talked about Peace and goodwill toward men. God would have us to walk in his perfect peace. When my mind is stayed on him, I am in perfect peace. It's just when I start going on out there and trying to do my own thing, that things kind of get roughed up. So, this baby Jesus that's born in Bethlehem also died on a cross on Calvary and was laid in the grave for three days and three days he arose, and he's evermore alive. And he evermore sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. And he said, told his disciples, at any point in time you can pray to the Father through my name. Ask the Father whatever you will, and my Father who hears in Jesus' name, according to the will of God, will hear your prayer and manifest his answer to you. So let me ask you something. Maybe you're saved here today. Maybe you're not worried about going to hell. But maybe there are some other things in your life that's going on in your life and nobody else might even know about it. But you're having that turmoil in your life and you're desiring for God to give you the answer. Well, let me tell you, surrender it. Hello? I don't have a gun in my pocket. But if somebody were to come up to me and say, stick them up and hold out that gun... You know what I'd do? I'd stick him up. And he'd say, give me all your stuff. Well, I don't know what I'd do. I probably would give him all my stuff. What would I do? Surrender. I don't like that word surrender. You know what that means? In the, in the wrestling, what does it mean? 
when you tap out, you surrender, you give up. And, and nobody likes to surrender, but I want to tell you here today that the very best thing you can do with God is to surrender whatever it is in your life that's causing you that hardship, and He will give you peace, and then you're not just to do nothing, but you are to listen so that whenever He tells you what to do, you are instantaneously obedient and you're ready to go. Amen? So, if you're here today and you're not saved, today is a wonderful day to be saved. Today is a glorious day of salvation. How many would agree with me that today is the day of salvation? Amen. Every, a lot of folks cross this congregation. It's a good day to be saved. And if you're not saved, come to Jesus today and be saved. And if you're a believer and you've got these things on your heart, come, give them to the Lord. And then say, this is the place where I'm nailing it down. This is the place where I'm trusting Jesus that he's going to do it all. And no matter what comes, I'm going to trust you, God, that you are in control of this thing in my life. And I want to tell you, you'll come down here with turmoil, but you'll go back to your seat with peace. Zacchaeus, when he went up into that tree, he went up into that tree of center. When he came back down that tree, he came down a saved man. Amen? Can it happen just that fast? Can it happen just like that? I want to tell you, we serve a supernatural God that nothing is too hard for him. And if you're dealing with something this day, come give it to God. Or if you can't come up here and kneel, then just where you are, give it to God. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus for loving us. And I thank you for Bethlehem. I thank you for the shepherds. I thank you for the, for the swaddling clothes and the manger. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for Mary and Joseph being completely obedient to you to do what they knew they had to do. Thank you, God. Now, Lord, I pray that if there's one here under the sound of my voice, whether it's here or on the airways, God, I pray that today would be their day of salvation, that they would repent of their sin. They would ask you to forgive them by the power of the cross. They would ask you to birth in them a new spirit by the power of the resurrection, and that they would ask you to fill them with the Holy Spirit today. And then, Lord, if there are those believers here or in the sound of my voice, that as they hear that they can be released from the turmoil and the anxiety that is in their life, if they surrender to God, then I pray that today would be the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.